All right, today I'm going to give you guys a detailed look at this Mark V, uh, continuing my revisiting series. And uh, this is the Mark V Hot Toys, and uh, this came out 2011. Same with uh, Mark VI. There's the back of the sleeve. And then uh, on the bottom here, I can focus that in. It'll actually tell you right there. It's 2011 Hot Toys. So this came out same year as Mark VI. And uh, let's take a look at the figure itself. Alright, so here we have the figure outside of packaging. And uh, let's get a good look at the accessories first. Comes with two bases. One is the one, uh, one is your generic oval base. And then the other one is um, it's one from the um, Hall of Armor. And it comes with a translucent rod and a clamp. And then here's the briefcase. Supposedly this turns into the armor. And then the battle damage chest plate. And then another battle damage piece. And the pair of handcuffs. Battle damage arm. And then a the repulsor blast, battle damage hand, and articulated hands. So let's get a closer look at that battle damage arm. Still holds up uh, for something that uh, came out seven years ago. And uh, one thing that I didn't like, and is still uh, I still don't like, this is a uh, rubber piece uh, covering the elbow joint. Now uh, I have moved this figure a bit uh, before, and uh, I haven't had any issues with it. I mean, this uh, piece of rubber around the elbow hasn't deteriorated or anything like that, so I guess it will still hold uh, without any issues. Uh, there's the rest of the arm. And the hand is removable, because you want to replace it with the repulsor blast hand. Palm. And then this arm has light of feature. Same with the regular arms. That's the battery compartment. And some bolt jointed arm. Here's the repulsive blast hand. The chest plate. That center piece. Uh, so a little bit for the briefcase and the cuffs. And a closer look at the Mark V armor. This armor is still one of my favorite. Um, I like how skinny it is. A lot skinnier than uh, other armor. And I like the plating of this guy. But uh, since we're getting a diecast version, I decided to sell this one, and um, and uh, I really like the new diecast version because here you can see the silver paint is not really metallic; it's just silver paint. But uh, with the new diecast version, all the silver paint sections are all uh, with a more metallic silver paint to it instead of this. Uh, grayish silver paint and uh, this one has rubber panties but it hasn't changed color at all so I'm happy about that and here's the back side of the armor and with the new diecast version uh, there are moving plates with the mark 5 armor especially around the um, the legs section like down here, they have moving parts and stuff, but uh, it would have been nice if the diecast version has a bit more moving parts, or even a briefcase that could actually open up. Uh, this one is not, uh, you're not able to open this briefcase up, but uh, I would figure the diecast version would at least be something a little bit different. But instead, uh, I think that version. The diecast version has the same briefcase as this one. And 
I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think it is the same one. I'm not sure yet. Because I don't have it in hand yet. I can't tell you. But it would be nice if it could actually open up. Here I took the chest plate off and you can see all the inner workings. Kinda neat. And uh these two um chest collar piece, uh this this right here and this right here it actually moves when you uh, it shifts a little bit when you move the arms because it helps uh, give them a, a little more range as far as uh, articulation and here's the mark 5 with all the battle damage pieces you have the chest plate the center piece and the full arm And I think a lot of people back then were uh, wondering whether we'll get a DX version of Mark V because uh, in the scene he was wearing that um, uh, driving suit. So uh, we would, uh, a lot of people thought that we were going to get a Tony Stark with the uh, racing suit with this Mark V, but uh, we never did. And uh, Diecast version, it's the same thing, it's just a figure with battle damage pieces. But paint job's a lot better, and uh, articulation-wise is a bit better too, because this one does have uh, a lot of limitation, um, especially around the hips, because it it only has a ball joint. Uh, even though the rubber penny does give a little more range, uh, it it's not as good as some of the newer diecast version where it has panels that could actually move out of the way for the legs to move. So yeah, as far as range of motion, this is very standard action figure type of articulation. And uh, here's a side view of the Mark V. I think as far as um, accuracy, uh, this looks quite accurate in my opinion. Uh, they did a comparison between the two Mark Vs. The uh, Hot Toys did uh, put up a picture with the plastic Mark V and the diecast Mark V and uh, you could actually see the diecast one it's a bit taller than the plastic version same with all the other uh, Iron Man figures it looks like Mark VI is taller uh, the diecast version is taller I would imagine the Mark IV as well and this figure has a pretty good abdominal uh, range of motion here you can see uh, this piece, uh, this section, uh, keep it lifted up, so uh, it'll give it a little more room for you to bend his abdominal section, the abs. And you want to straighten him back out. Let me straighten him back out. And he could arch back about that much. Not a whole lot, but still, there's something. And one thing really attracted me to this armor is the uh, these uh, lines on his uh, face mask. This is very unique, and uh, I'm not sure. I don't think any other armor has uh, this type of design on the face plate. At least nothing this pronounced, because uh, they are hugely deep grooves on his mask here, which I really like. And uh, yeah. So, is this still a piece that holds up in 2018? I think so. Uh, as far as range of motion, it's a bit lacking compared to some of the newer Iron Man figures that we have seen with all the shifting plates and uh, arms that extends out and then elbows that extends to give you a better range. This one doesn't have any of those. Uh, it does have a domino section where it lifts up so it gives you a little bit more range but otherwise everything is very basic with this figure. And if you have this figure uh, it's still a nice piece to have but uh, if you plan on selling this and buying diecast is that something I recommend? Yes because the diecast it does have a better range of motion and a paint job is definitely a lot better than this one uh, because this uses uh, gray silver paint instead of the metallic silver paint that uh, the upcoming one has and then uh, it's uh, no longer using the rubber panties that's nice 
And uh, yeah, so this one does have a lot of uh, accessories though, so I'm very happy about that. And uh, I think the new one has just about as much. Yeah, it would have been nice if we got if we got the uh, Tony Stark face with the helmet, uh, where you could actually because uh, in, in that one scene, I mean, you can see his face inside the helmet as it comes down, the faceplate as it comes down. So it would have been nice if we got that head sculpt uh, with this figure, or even the diecast version. So there you have it. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, revisiting uh, video of Mark V from Hot Toys. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.